Hi, in this video we're going to look at something called lambda expressions. So what are lambda expressions? Well, we already know how to define and create functions in Python using the def statement. Right? We have def, my func, some parameters, maybe none or a few, and then a colon followed by the body of the function underneath of that. With a return statement, optionally, that returns something. Of course, if we don't supply a return statement, Python puts one in for us and essentially returns the none object. But a function is something that has a name, that has parameters, and that has some code that allows you to return something from that function. Lambda expressions are simply another way of creating functions. They're also called anonymous functions, and we'll see why in a bit. So let's look at the syntax for creating a lambda expression. The first thing is we have this keyword called lambda. That's a required keyword. It basically says, hey, I'm creating a function. Just like the def keyword says, hey, I'm creating a function. It's followed by the parameter list. The parameter list is not enclosed in parentheses. It's just a parameter list, which is optional. In other words, it may not contain any parameters, in which case you wouldn't have anything after this lambda here. It must, however, be followed by the colon. That's basically what says, this is the end of my parameter list. And then that is followed by this expression. Now, when the lambda function is called, right, so when the function is called, this expression is evaluated and returned. So you can think of this as the body of the function. But the expression itself returns a function object. When you run this piece of code, lambda, your parameter list, call on the expression, it's not actually evaluating the expression at that point. Just like when you call def, when you run the def statement, right? It's actually creating the function, it's not running the function. Well, the same thing here, except that this will actually return a function object. So this expression here creates and returns a function with these parameters and this as the body, as the return value, basically, of the function. So when you run the lambda, when you call the lambda function, this function object that gets returned here, then what happens is that it will actually evaluate and return that expression, but only when it is called, not when it is being created. Just like the def, the functions used, you know, that we create with def, aren't getting called when we run def, they're getting called later when we call the function with the parentheses. So this expression can be assigned to a variable. It can be even passed to an argument or as an argument to another function. But you'll notice that it doesn't have a name, right? In def, we provide a name for the function. Here, we don't provide a name for the function. It's just a function object that exists in memory but it hasn't been assigned to a variable, so it's basically anonymous, right? We don't have a, 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 a name that we can attach to it. That's why they're also called anonymous functions. But it is a function, just as if we had created it using def, except def also assigns a name to the function. So let's see some examples. Lambda x colon x to the power of 2. This is basically a function with a single parameter x that will return x squared. In the next example, here we have lambda x comma y. So this is a function that takes two parameters, x and y, and will return x plus y. We can, of course, also have a lambda expression that has no parameters. So when we call this function, it will just return the string hello. We could also get more complicated, of course, uh, we can say lambda s colon, so we have a parameter s, and we take s, we reverse it, and then we take it uh, to an uppercase, right? So if you don't know about slicing, if you don't know what this does, don't worry about it, we'll cover that in an upcoming video. But if we take a look at this, if we do a look at the type of this expression here, that will actually return a function. It is a true you know, it's, it's an honest-to-goodness function in Python. Now, again, note that these expressions, all these expressions here, here are function objects. Right? They return a function object, but they are not named. That's why we call them anonymous functions. Now, I want to point out something right now, that 
And you may have run across this maybe in when you were studying other languages or reading this, but there's a sometimes confusion. People think that lambdas or anonymous functions are closures. No, they're not. They are not the same thing. They're not equivalent. Lambdas or anonymous functions can be closures, but they don't have to be. They're just regular functions. So, you know, if, if you're thinking that, oh, a lambda is a closure, no. And we'll, we'll look at closures later on in this section. So what can we do with a lambda? Well, we can assign it to a variable name. So we could do something like this. We could say my func equals, and then this lambda expression. Remember, this is an expression that returns a function. We can assign it to a variable name. So now we have my func, and my func is of type function. So if we call type of my func, we'll get function. We can now call it. We can say my func, call it, passing it 3. Well, it's going to call this function, and x is going to take on the value of 3, so we'll get 9 out of that. So as you can see, it just behaves like a regular function. You can do my func of 4, that will return 16. This would be identical to doing this line of code. Def my func x return x squared. Well, actually, two lines of code, right? But it's exactly the same thing. If you look at type of my func, you'll also get that it's a function. You'll get that my func of 3 is 9 and my func of 4 is 16. So this line of code here and this line of code here is exactly the same thing, right? It's not different. It's not that this is a special type of function versus this one. No, it's the same thing. Now, you can also pass it as an argument to another function. So let's say we have this function here in our code called def apply underscore func, which takes in two variables. It takes in a variable x and it takes in another variable that I've named fn for function. So I'm expecting a function in the second argument. And all this thing does, it's just going to call this function with the initial value that we pass. Okay, so basically, it's just going to call fn of x, right? It's going to return that. Now, what we can do with lambdas is we can call it this way. We can say apply func 3, so 3 is going to go into x, and then the function is going to be this thing right here, right? This is a function. So when I call that, what is it going to do? Well, it's going to call fn of x. It's going to call this function passing in 3. So we're going to get 9 for that result. Similarly, we could say something like this, apply func. So I'm still using the same apply func. Now I've got a variable value of 2, but my lambda expression has changed. So I'm using a different function, saying it's going to be x plus 5. So in this case, 2 plus 5, so we'll get 7. So you can see it's pretty handy to kind of do these inline functions, right? These very short little functions, and we'll see where it comes in handy uh, in other places as well. Of course, you can get a little bit more complex if you want. You can call apply func of abc, and the function is going to take some um, variable x that is indexable, so we can do some slicing. It's going to take the second uh, character, or the one index character, all the way to the end, and then multiply it by 3. So, for example, when we pass abc, it's going to take b and c, and times 3. So we'll get bc, 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 right? So equivalently, we could have done it this way, right? We could have said def fn1 of x return x slice that 1 forward times 3, okay? So we could have done that, and then we can just call apply func abc with fn underscore 1. We've seen that before, how to pass functions as parameters to other functions. Well, this is no different. In fact, this function here that returns this is the same, really, as this function here. It does the same thing. Now, obviously, this function and this function are not the same objects, right? This was created here at some memory address. This was now another function created at some other memory address. But in terms of functionality, they do the same thing. So now there are some limitations, though, to lambdas. The body of a lambda is limited to a single expression. So it has to be a single expression, which means you cannot do assignments inside a lambda function. You can do assignments, create variables and all kinds of stuff, right, in a regular function. Well, in a lambda, you're limited to a single expression. So you can't do this, for example, right? You can't say lambda x and then set x equal to 5. That's not going to work. 
Same thing with this, right? This is also just an assignment. I'm just saying x plus 5 and then assigning it back to x. That's the same as this, really. It won't work either. You can't do that. You can't do annotations either. So, for example, when you write a regular function, you can annotate your arguments, your parameters to say, well, you know, I really would like this to be of type int. That's what I expect. Um, of course, Python ignores this when it runs. And if you want to pass in a string, it will be happy to do that for you. Of course, with this code, that's going to fail. But, you know, if you pass in a float, that's going to work, you know, and so on. But, for example, you cannot do this with a lambda, right? You can't put a type annotation in, la in, in lambda expressions. How does it know what's going on here, right, with this? So, I suppose you could have something where, you know, maybe the definition could be changed so that you can put a parentheses around your arguments, in which case you might be able to annotate them. But that's not going to work. Now, you can still give them default values. And we'll see that when we look at the code. But it's perfectly fine to say lambda x equals 5 and then x times 2. So if you don't specify x when you call the function, it will put in the default value. So that, that still works okay, but no annotations. Basically, your the body, that expression, right, has to be a single logical line of code. Now, you can use line continuation. That's okay, because that's a physical, right, separation, not a logical separation, as we discussed earlier on in this course. So, for example, it's perfectly fine to write it like this. I mean, it's not perfectly fine from a readability standpoint, but from Python's perspective, it's okay with that. But in general, you shouldn't have to split your lambdas over multiple lines. If you are, then you might want to rethink what you're doing and maybe use a def. Def is something that allows you to have more complex functions. Lambdas are meant to be used for simple, you know, simple expressions that you want to do something with. And we'll see some examples of that. So let's switch to some code and see how that works. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a bit.